Hi guys, and welcome to a new series. There's been a fair bit of discussion just recently about the new upcoming Masterpiece Optimus Prime figure, which is just the latest example of the line's new aesthetic direction, as it does anything and everything that it can to translate the look of the original Generation 1 cartoon into toy form. Prime being probably the most extreme example yet, as he's built with an entire fake truck chest to replace the actual truck mode parts when he's in robot mode. A conversation I got into on Twitter on the day of the reveal inspired me to make this new mini-series of quickfire episodes, in which I'm going to talk about the development of the original, classic Transformers character designs, cutting quite a bit deeper than I would on my other series, The Basics. This is The Art of Transformers. So for this first episode, we're going to go right back to the beginning to what I like to call the original It. The story of the Transformers character designs as we know them today began with the animated sequences that were produced for the first commercials for the Marvel comic book and the toys that aired in 1984. Japanese artist Shohei Kohara was tapped to create the eight designs that would be featured in the ads. Optimus Prime, Prowl, Sideswipe, Jazz, Soundwave, Laserbeak, Megatron, and the Decepticon jet design shared by Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp. Kohara massively streamlined the designs of the toys, giving them much more human proportions, which shifted around between modes in ways that the toys couldn't. For instance, look at the way Optimus Prime's bumper expands to become his robot mode pelvis. These designs were then revised by Marvel Productions artist Floro Deary, who added other details of his own invention that weren't based on the toys, like the now well-known triangular patterns on Prime's wrists, and stripped away or concealed many of the vehicle mode parts that Kohara had left visible in robot mode, like the Autobot's wheels or the jet's tail fins. These were the designs used by the commercials. Following the production of the commercials, the Kohara Deary designs continued to be used in the full-length Transformers animated series with a few further modifications. Some were subtle, like the complete removal of the wheels on Optimus Prime's legs, and some were huge, like the significant redesign of Megatron, along with revisions to some of their colors, like Starscream going from mostly grayish black to red and blue. These would become the final versions of the characters, the iconic designs used throughout the show that still influence how they look today. But the multi-stage design process, like a game of telephone, left them with a variety of little quirks and eccentricities that nowadays we just take as standard parts of their appearances. For example, the number and colour of the details on Optimus Prime's bumper changes between modes, and the grey stripe on his torso, based on a silver sticker on his toy, is missing from his final truck mode design. Here's a catalogue photo of the original Diaclone version of the toy that's missing that same sticker. Could this image or one like it have mistakenly been used as reference? It would also explain why the details on his bumper are yellow. The colour is based on other stickers seen here that were left off the Transformers release of the figure. Note also how Kohara's designs universally omit the shoulder-mounted weapons that came with Jazz, Prowl and Sideswipe's toys. Sideswipe's cannon would eventually be added, but only for his finalised cartoon design. He doesn't have it in the commercials, and Jazz and Prowl were never modified to add their weapons, which makes them stand out as unique oddities when compared to all the other Autobots in the cartoon who did have their toy's distinctive shoulder armament. The three Decepticon Jets toys each have different stickers with their own unique patterns. In the cartoon, however, because they all use the same single character design, they're identical. The design was based specifically on the stickers from Thundercracker's toy, with triangles in the shoulder intakes and pinstripes along the wings. Most notorious, of course, is the fact that Kohara's Megatron design was based not on the actual toy, but on an unproduced prototype for the figure, with a very different look. 
On his first round of revisions, Deary significantly altered the figure's chest and abdomen to better match the toy, and strangely added a handle to the fusion cannon, creating the design that would be seen in both the commercials and the first two issues of the Marvel comic. The finalised cartoon design gave Megatron a new head and cannon that matched the toy, but one element of the prototype lingered to become part of Megatron's famous silhouette. His gun barrel was mounted behind his right shoulder instead of on his hip like the toy. And that's all for this episode. If you enjoyed it, let me know and I'll come back and talk about the other 1984 characters next time. In the meantime, you can subscribe and follow me on Twitter for news and updates. And if you can, please do consider supporting the channel on Patreon so that this and Transformers The Basics can keep on coming.